G'day Internet, it's been a while but I'm back with another video. This video is the first in a series of three in which I'm going to build out a router table. Now I've chosen to build this router table into the wing of my table saw and that's because I don't have a whole lot of space in here. This is about the only place I could put it so it's all about utilizing the space you've got. So this first video will go through making the table itself and attaching it to the cabinet saw. In the second video, I'm going to go through making a fence to attach this table. And in the third and final video, we're going to create a vacuum box and set up dust collection for the whole thing. With that all said, let's get into the build. Before we get into it, I want to take you through the components that I've chosen to make my router table with. Starting with the router. I've chosen to go with this Triton router and one of the main reasons is price. I originally intended to buy a router lift and a router to go with it, but when I went to purchase that I discovered that the router lift was about 700 New Zealand dollars, which was more expensive than this specific router. Now the thing that's special about this router is it's actually designed so it can go in a router table. It's got a special long reach thing that you can stick through the top of your router table to wind the router up and down. So I figured spending less money for the router and not needing a lift was a good win. The next component that I purchased is this router plate insert. And this specific one is actually made directly for the Triton router. So all the holes are perfectly in the right place. The next component I purchased, and these aren't absolutely necessary, but they do make the construction of your table a lot easier. There's less work to do and less fiddling about, is these adjustable mounts by Craig. And they're specific for your router plate here as well. And finally, so we've got something to attach our fence to, is these runners. I'll have links to all of these in the descriptions below. The first thing we need to do is remove the existing leaf from the cabinet saw. This will allow us to make more accurate measurements of the space we have to work with. Mine was fairly easy as it was just attached with several Allen bolts. I'm going to make the router table out of MDF with a frame of some cheap pine. So I take some measurements of the space and subtract the thickness of the frame to get the size of the main table. I then cut out two pieces of 18mm or 3 quarter inch MDF to the same dimensions as I'm going to double them up for a thicker table. On the safety side of things here, I've forgotten to wear a mask for the entire video when I'm cutting this MDF. This isn't great as MDF dust is pretty bad, so don't make the same mistake I did. Next up, we want to cut out the space for the insert plate to go. I want to put it exactly in the centre of the table, so I'm going to start by measuring and marking out the top two corners of the plate. With these measurements made, I take four pieces of scrap MDF and set them around the plate to make a sort of fence or guide. To fix each piece of the guide in place, I'm going to use the good old blue tape trick of sticking some blue painter's tape to both things I want to glue, applying CA glue to one piece and kicker to another, then carefully aligning and sticking both pieces together. Of course, if you've got some good quality double-sided tape, that'll work too. With the guides in place, we're going to start cutting out the corners. 
and in this case the radius of the rounded corners of the insert plate match a 38mm or 1.5 inch diameter Forstner bit. So with the Forstner bit in my drill press and using the guides to align it, I cut out all four corners for the insert plate. Now I can flip it over and roughly cut out the rest, bearing in mind that I don't want to cut exactly on the line as we're going to use a router to clean up the edges next. With the middle cut out, we can use a router with a flush trim bit to clean up the rough edges left by the jigsaw. In this case, I'm using a compression bit from KM Tools as this should give me a nice clean cut on both sides of the board. With the area for the insert plate all cut out, I can now remove the guide pieces and the blue tape. We're going to run into some issues when we try and attach the table to the saw as the table will be thick enough to interfere with the bolts that will attach it to the saw. To deal with this I'm going to cut out some voids on the bottom piece of the table giving enough space for a bolt to fully fit through and also giving me enough room to get a spanner in there to hold a nut in place when I'm bolting everything together. Next up we're going to cut out the same hole for the insert plate on the bottom piece of the table, but this time we can use the top as a guide. I use the top to draw the rough position of the hole and then use the jigsaw to cut it out. And just like last time I'm not going right up to the line as I'm going to use a router to clean that up later on. With the hole roughly cut, it's time to glue the two pieces together, and instead of clamps I'm just going to screw them together as well, being careful not to put screws anywhere near where I want to put T-Track later on. And when the glue is dry, I can use the same flush trim bit to clean up the bottom hole. Next up I'm going to laminate some Formica onto the top. This isn't 100% necessary, but it does improve the durability of the table. I cut a piece a little larger than the table using a skill saw. To laminate it to the top I'm using a contact adhesive, starting by applying an even coat to both the Formica and the tabletop. After around 10 minutes when the glue is touched dry, it's time to attach the Formica to the tabletop. This stuff sticks as soon as it makes contact, so I'm using some sticks to raise the Formica from the top so I can align it correctly. Then when I'm ready I can remove the centre stick and start pressing the Formica down. And using a rolling pin I stole from the kitchen, I begin to remove the outer sticks and roll it down nice and evenly. Then I can use the same flush trim bit that I used before to trim the edges of the Formica to match the top perfectly. And then I can do the same for the hole for the insert plate, drilling a hole first to fit the router bit into. I swear, this is my favourite part of the whole build. Next up we need to add three strips of T-Track to the table. Two for the fence to run along and one for accessories like a featherboard. For the first one I simply measured and clamped a straight edge to the table 
and then used a pattern bit to route one edge. Then I swapped the straight edge to the other side to widen the channel to the right size. For the last two, I opted to use two straight edges, sandwiching the T-track in between them to guide the router, which was far more efficient. You may have noticed that the T-track running along the long side isn't actually long enough, and this is simply the longest piece of T-track I had. But it ended up being a bit of a happy accident, as you need to leave a gap for accessories to slide into anyway. Conversely, the small links were too long, so I cut them down on the miter saw, cutting them short enough to leave a gap for the bolt to slide into. Finally, I use a rubber mallet to set them all flush and then screw them all down. You may also want to use some epoxy here for extra strength, but I didn't bother. Lastly, we need to add a border around the table. I'm using pine here, but I'd recommend a hardwood if you have access to it. Also, I'd recommend using wider stock than I've used. This is 45mm or 1 and 3 quarter inches which ended up being a bit too small. I clamped the edges to the table before screwing them in, but I forgot to pre-drill the holes into the table which is super important when screwing into MDF as it can split quite easily. With the table done, we can start to attach the insert plate. I started by laying out all the levelers and roughly inserting the leveling grub screws. I then add the top screws without tightening them. This is to ensure that the levelers are in the right place before screwing them into the table. Once I'm happy with their position, I use a self-centering drill bit to pre-drill the holes and attach the levelers to the table. When they're all attached and you're ready to fine tune the level, take note that the grub screws are there to do the leveling. The silver screws are simply there to hold the plate down. So make sure you get it all level before tightening the silver screws. Attaching the table to the saw should be as easy as measuring and drilling the holes for the bolts, checking for level and then inserting and tightening the bolts. However, there are a few pitfalls to watch out for, like the holes on each rail looking like they're spaced the same on both sides, but they're not, or said holes looking like they're level with each side, but they're not, or lastly, not using wide enough wood for the edging, so your holes end up being very close to the edge of the wood. We're on the home straight now, all we have to do is attach the router. First off we need to take out the spring, being careful not to let the spring explode out of its housing. Then we need to flip the router over and remove the bottom plate. Then finally, we can bring the router over to the new table, align the four holes and screw the router into place. Another awesome feature about this router is when the chuck's extended to the top, it automatically locks so you can change the bit with a single spanner.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. Stay tuned for the next video in which we're going to build out the fence that goes on this table, shortly followed by a vacuum box and dust collection for the whole thing. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.